call our meeting to order. <clears throat> Back in open session. Uh, let's start with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. If you please uh, join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we'll have a report out in a closed session. Stephanie. Uh, the board authorized general counsel to um, begin negotiations related to the real property identified in the agreement of interest. Thank you. So uh, we'll move right along to uh, public comment. This is the time for members of the public to address us on any issue not on the agenda. I don't have any requests to address us, uh, and we <clears throat> have not received any communications uh, through email or mail uh, for this meeting. Uh, having no requests, uh, then we'll... Oops, there's no mic. Yeah. I need to fill it out still. I'll give it to oh. you after. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. I I was a little taller. Hi, um, I'm Ocean Reserve, and I represent um, some of the Delta counties as well as many local interests. And um, rather than comment on specific agenda items, I just wanted to uh, let you know that, you know, we are still very concerned about this project. I see you have a lot of budget um, stuff in front of you later on, and I think we're very concerned about further investments in this project, which is not fully baked and not ready to go and has critical deficiencies in terms of its permitting and environmental review, and that's part of the feedback that um, DWR got at the Delta Stewardship Council um, and why the consistency determination was withdrawn. And so I think that it is premature to be investing your ratepayer funds into this project, which does not work and which also crushes Delta communities and counties. And so I would ask you to really think about why are you moving forward with this project right now in this way? Um, there is going to continue to be a lot of opposition. This will not solve any water bars. It would just continue them. And I think there is a willingness to discuss ways to meet everyone's needs, and I think we're all willing to have that discussion, but we can't have it while the tunnels are being threatened on the Delta communities. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move right along to approval of the minutes of November 15th meeting. I'll move approval. Second. Second. President Most. Estramera, if yes. I might note, we have two sets of minutes. Oh, yes. I started with the November 15th. They're both November 15th. Yeah. And proof oh, we have, okay. Yeah, special meeting ahead of time. Okay. And the second? Second, also. Include them? Okay. Uh, any questions, questions? Those motions say aye. 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 Both say no. I'm going to abstain because I had to skip out on the one meeting. Okay. Um, we'll move right along then to uh, the consent calendar. We have no items today. Uh, discussion items, the first thing I'll consider a proven budget uh, revision for 2018-19. Uh, Thank you, uh, President Estramera. Uh, in your board packet, there is a a board memo for you discussing this item, but I do also have a brief presentation. Uh, thank you. Let's just go ahead and turn this on. Um, just by way of background, um, in July, the board did adopt a budget for fiscal year 2018-19. Um, included in that budget were strategic objectives that included basically establishing the design and construction authority, getting the executive office uh, set up, uh, developing the support management office, and getting other key program areas set up. And then, as we've said actually several times today, just starting off on some critical path items and some long lead time activities that don't involve in construction per se, but are necessary so we can get the groundwork done for that construction activity. Nothing about that's changed. Those are still the same objectives. Um, basically, what we're proposing is simply to revise the expenditure plan 
that aligns more more uh, closely to the current pace of expected work. Um, so what I have here is just uh, a chart that um, compares what you adopted for the fiscal year 2018-19. That's in the first column with what we're proposing uh, for the revised forecast for fiscal year 2018-19. And um, just to be clear, the items that are in the first column, they have been restated so that they are consistent with the budget structure that's prescribed in the Joint Exercise of Powers Agreement between uh, DWR and the JPA. When we first presented the budget, we had things organized a little differently. So we've reorganized them um, to be consistent with that document. And going forward, that is the structure that we're going to be preparing the budget under and reporting under. Um, that's, so it's, it's helpful for DWR, obviously, so we are both comparing to the same thing. Um, but again, the budget that you adopted in July was $133.57 million. And today, um, the revised forecast that we're asking you to approve would be $61.88 million. And I'll go through uh, the different items and uh, kind of what some of the differences are. So this is uh, just uh, obviously comparing uh, the restated adopted budget to the revised forecast. And what you can kind of see is that the items that are over on the left, contingency, the land acquisition, and some of the pre-construction items we had identified, those have been removed from the, the revised forecast. What we're really focusing on are program management, uh, engineering management, and some environmental work. Um, and again, what you adopted back in July was $133.57 million. And what we're expecting is $61.88 million. So under program management, uh, the adopted fiscal year budget was $21.97 million. The revised forecast is $17.3 million. Um, the items, the first five items are unchanged. That, that particular area still includes uh, the, the executive director, uh, our legal counsel, external affairs, finance, program management, our IT functions. Um, in the restatement, what we've included under this category is costs related to property acquisition. So the survey and mapping item has been moved into this, this particular area. And the other things that would go along with some property acquisition. The cost of property itself is going to be a standalone item. So those items were moved in here. Um, under engineering management, uh, the restated fiscal year 19 budget is $46.74 million, and the revised forecast is $40.31 million. Um, again, the first three items were in the original budget that you adopted for this particular area, but what we've added in here now to be consistent with the JEPA is the um, activities associated with utilities, and then there was a very small uh, design item for tunnel and shafts that we've added into this engineering management that was in uh, other areas. Finally, uh, environmental, what you adopted was 6.19 million, and the revised forecast is 4.27 million. None of those items have changed. Um, there's no ch again, no change to the activities, it's just at a lower level of effort. So this uh, is the same information, but on a quarterly basis, so you can see what we're committing to. Again, just the first three areas, construction, land acquisition, mitigation, we're not anticipating any expenditures this year. And there is no contingency included in here now. Um, the contingency has been moved, basically, to the next year to fund those activities. And then uh, finally, I just wanted to provide for you, uh, again, uh, the funding contributions. There's no change to the contributions. Um, these are on track. And again, what really is going to happen is these funding contributions are going to provide the funding source for the next two fiscal years, so this fiscal year and then 19 and 20. And. That is uh, what I have for you. So the staff recommendation is for you to adopt the, 20, the fiscal year 2018-19 revised budget by a minute order. Thank you, Jill. Questions? Sure. Yeah. I, I think the, the, the budget is appropriate in, in going back to when we adopted the budget uh, six months ago. 
that large contingency, a lot of it was just because of the beginning, we didn't know how quickly things would ramp up. And I think it's very reasonable that you come back, which I think if I recall accurately, both Jill and June indicated that that would probably be a lot lower. And I think this reflects that. So I think I'll make a motion to prove it. it's consistent with what we were trying to do when we started out. Okay. I'll, I'll second that. Any questions? Okay. Well, public comment, like I mentioned, is any time uh, just make a request, give it to the clerk on any item on the agenda. Having had none, we just go right to the motion. Those the motion say aye. 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 Opposed aye. say no. And we'll move right along to our next uh, <clears throat> our next item on the agenda, line B. Consider passing resolution adopting the Delta Conveyance Design Construction Authority Small and Disabled Veteran Business mm -hmm. Enterprise Policy. President Estramera, members of the board, yes, I'm Jeff. introducing Nathan Perkis. He's Definitely. on our transition team as our external affairs um, manager, and he's been working with the Metropolitan Water Districts. Lizette, who's here too, um, because she manages this a comparable program for Metropolitan. Great. Thank Ladies, you, good afternoon. Members of the board, uh, this item before you is a uh, small and disabled veteran business, business enterprise policy uh, with the intent of authorizing the development of a program that reflects that policy. Uh, the policy is pretty straightforward. Uh, it uh, does four things. It uh, has a goal to pursue small business enterprise participation of 25%, a goal to pursue disabled veteran business enterprise participation of 3%, goal also to monitor compliance and report annually on the activities and also to educate the public about contracting opportunities through website, uh, social media, community outreach, and workshop programs. Uh, so it's a, a pretty succinct policy uh, because we're very early in the program and there's a lot of opportunities in the future if we wanted to add additional components such as if we wanted a local business component to the, the program, we certainly could do that in the future if that's something that would be of interest. Um, so we have had some public interest in uh, this policy, so uh, we did want to share a little bit of uh, comparative information about this uh, policy versus other types of policies that are out there. Uh, uh, yes, that one. Uh, so you'll see this is a, just a comparison, simple comparison of some of the different uh, programs that are out there. And 25% and 3% goal is something that uh, both the state of California uh, does. Metropolitan has a 25% small business goal, but they also work uh, their disabled veteran policy within the small business goal. High Speed Rail actually has a 30% small business goal. Again, in the future, if we you know want to up the goal, if we see that that's something that might work out, it's something to consider for the future. So it's very comparable with other goals. We also wanted to address the issue that uh, there was some uh, discussion about a requirement versus a goal. So the next slide, I wanted to just uh, point out that Metropolitan has had a goal uh, since 2003 uh, has met that 25% margin just with a goal without a requirement. We think that having a goal offers the flexibility within different contracts. If we have a contract that has highly specialized work, mm -hmm. um, it really offers us the opportunity to make sure we keep the work on time and then we meet the goals in other ways. And so we think these are very doable goals and uh, uh, California Water Fix is going to be a really big project and this is a great opportunity for us not to just provide reliability benefits, but also community benefits of other kinds uh, for small business and disabled veteran uh, businesses. So with that, uh, we'd ask for your support, and uh, Rosette and I are here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Questions? I just want to comment. I like the idea of having goals, because you, sometimes you do need that flexibility, and, and as you said, we can possibly make it up in other areas. I like the fact that we have a high percentage of goal. Sure. No, I, I, obviously, uh, both Steve and I at, at Metropolitan, we've been very proud of the staff to work on this. We get presentations on a quarterly basis about some of the outreach and the efforts made to get both veterans and small businesses involved in our in all facets of contracting work. And I think um, we would expect the DCA to pursue those types of activities too. Sure. 
and, and one of the things that, that we are hoping is that it provides lots of uh, lots of opportunities for for folks who can benefit from it. So the chart before you is something that Rich and I have seen before at uh, MWD presentations. Uh, I am very proud of the fact that we have raised that blue bar to the green bar level. That means that we've succeeded at our earlier goals and have notched them up a, a, a ratchet or two. So it's good to see us continuing that here. That's right. It speaks for itself. <coughs> Great. Thank you. Good work. Motion? I move we approve this. Second. Motion is second for approval. Uh, any discussion? Questions? I have no public comment. Those for motion say aye. 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 Both say no. Passes unanimously. We'll move right along then to our executive director's report. Jill, good afternoon. Good afternoon again. Um, we have written reports, and I am happy to answer any questions. I don't really have anything verbally to add to what's in the monthly report. Yes. Any questions on the <coughs> executive director? I don't have any. There being none. Happy holidays. Yeah. You too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move right along to the general counsel's report. Uh, written report is included yes. in the packet, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions, Steph? <laughs> okay. Happy holidays. <laughs> we'll move right along to the treasury report. Just Thank you, President Estramero. My report is also in the package, yes. and I don't have anything to add to it, but would be happy to answer questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you all, by the way, for uh, your written reports. Any questions, June? Thank you, June. Happy Thank holidays. You. Happy holidays. <clears throat> um, any verbal reports? It's, um, no, not today. <clears throat> <clears throat> the written reports. Uh, future agenda items. Any requests up here? No. Nope. I think no, no, uh, we've got a few anticipated ones, but uh, <clears throat> and can you just mention uh, what we're going to try and do in January, just with respect to dates, what we're looking at? Um. I know it's kind of fluid. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. There may be a special board meeting in January, should we need it, to yes. continue discussion on the executive director um, selection process. Yes, and then we have our set date, which is the 17th. Yeah, there, our next our regular, regular meeting is July 7th. Uh, sorry, January 17th. <laughs> the other J oh, month. Nice, nice yeah. vacation here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, then the only thing that's left is uh, adjournment, so we'll do that. Adjourn to our next regularly scheduled meeting.